What's going on guys? Today I'm going to make a quick video showing how to take this uh, Honda 6 horse that I've got in this 312.8 and I'm going to swap it over into this C125. I got the C125 with no motor. Everything else on it's good. It's in pretty good condition. Uh, this 312.8, I broke the transmission. Low gear doesn't work and it's in really bad condition. Uh, front spindles are about wore through. Everything squeaks and rattles. It's all rusty. You can't really use the uh, the height or the rear lift. So I'm gonna swap it over into this uh, into this good chassis here, and hopefully it should be pretty quick and simple. They're both made off the same chassis. Uh, a couple sheet metal differences. Otherwise, mechanically, they're all about the same. So hopefully this all goes good and quick, and uh, you guys can see how to do a simple simple motor swap on these things. All right, so as far as stuff done to the Honda motor, really nothing special. I had to uh, change the exhaust, obviously, because the exhaust was blowing straight back at the center console. And in this case, I removed the gas tank, and I have it running off the fuel line, which is running off the stock gas tank in the back. Hopefully, I have the option to do that on the C125. Its gas tank has not been cleaned out or used, gosh, probably in the last 10 years. So we'll see what kind of condition it's in. Uh, if not, not a huge deal. I can take the gas tank and mount it back on the front of the motor for the time being. Uh, hopefully I don't have to do that though. Otherwise, I have the throttle hooked up to the original throttle in the tractor. Uh, hopefully I can transfer the throttle cable over to the other one because there's a bit of a bend and these throttle cables like to break uh, when you try to bend the end of them. So. I don't have a kill switch hooked up to the tractor. I probably won't. I've never found that to be an issue. It uh, You can stall it out pretty easy if you really need to shut the engine off without getting up off of the tractor. That being said, otherwise, hook a belt to the transmission and you're in good shape. All right, so at this point, I've got the motor pretty well mocked up. Uh, I was kind of worried about this. There are different holes in the chassis, considering how much older this is. They didn't have the same series of uh, Kohler engine. Uh, they also appear to use a different belt, different length probably. Um, not the end of the world, but it is causing some clearance issues that I didn't have on the other tractor. Uh, it's hitting pretty hard right here. I don't know if you can see that very well. So I'll have to cut a slot farther in underneath. Not the end of the world. Uh, it's also hitting the brake actuator rod, I would call it, that comes off the brake pedal. Again, not a huge worry. Uh, it'll probably wear in as the belt wears straight. This belt hasn't been actually on a mower Again, I'd say about 10 years. So it's twisted. It's uh, it's warped. Once it has some tension on it, it should straighten out quite a bit. Uh, I will have to make some new motor mounts down here. If you'll notice, they are uh, they're not sitting anywhere near where they used to. And in fact, it's sitting a little off the edge here. Again, not the end of the world. A couple extra steps that I was hoping not to have to deal with, though. Uh, good news though, the exhaust does work on this tractor. If anything, there's, I'd say, a little bit more clearance. So, uh, that's cool. Hopefully we'll uh, get some motor mounts made up and have this thing on here in the next half hour or so. All right, made some motor mounts. And set those on there, need a bolt there. Bolt there. Then I will take the motor, get it placed where it needs to be, and uh, I will weld the existing motor mounts to the new bars 
Then I will add a 45 degree brace from this point on the frame up to uh, this bolt here in the case. And that will give it some support for twisting like that. So I had to trim a little bit more up in there to get the belt to clear. And it just barely does. It doesn't right now because I don't have enough tension on it. But when I pull the motor forward, you can see I'm hitting my mounting bolts. I already trimmed this one. I have to trim it just a little bit more. And I'm going to have to go ahead and trim this one as well. I don't want to cut them all the way because... There's a good chance I may end up swapping the motor back over to the 312 in the future. Uh, hopefully not. I've got another motor in the plans for that. But, either way, I'll have to trim these down just to get them to fit a little bit better. Alright, something else I wanted to point out here before I weld this up. For setting clutch tension, I like to press the clutch part way down. In this case, I wanted it uh, even more than that when I did it. So I got it to where I wanted it to finally end up. And then I added this extra shim in here just to move the clutch pedal forward just a little bit more. That way there isn't an absurd amount of tension pulling back on the motor, pulling it out of place. But I kind of have a final location that I want the motor to end up in. It's worked really good for me. All right, so I'm gonna use the original throttle cable on the tractor. I'm just gonna use a torch and heat it up and uh, use some fat needle nose pliers and get a bend in it all the way around. Hopefully it bends and it doesn't snap. We'll see how it goes. We're going to give this thing a first start. Uh, I don't have the fuel lines primed, but I did clean the fuel tank. Should be good there. Uh, hopefully there's some gas left in the carburetor though. So let's fire it up. stuff. It's running good. It needs, uh, mounts need to be welded up more, shaking like crazy, and I need to add uh, a 
the support here. So let's work on that next. All right, so on my other tractor, I ran a support running at about 45 degree angle from this case bolt down to this hole in the frame, which is not bad at all, but you can't get to the back of it with a wrench very I can get to the back of it with my finger but it's very hard to get a wrench in there because there's a support bar welded in right there so I'm gonna change my plan and take a piece of angle iron drill a hole in it and use this bolt to mount the 45 Well, there you go, guys. That's all there is to it. Simple six horse swap. I've been using it for a few months now. Plowed all my fields with it. Pulled a bunch of trailers. I've even done some off roading. Works great. It's given me no problems yet. A little underpowered for off roading, but uh, for everything else, it does just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, like and subscribe to the page for some more garden tractor content. We'll be bringing it to you. Thanks for watching.